Hello, this is Bertrand, reporting for Infowars.com, up here in Ontario, Canada. Um, just decided to make this video um, regarding uh, Facebook um, blocking posts. Um, just want to bring this to your attention. Uh, hopefully this video will uh, bring some light to the situation. Uh, this is my Facebook page. Um, regarding uh, historical evidence regarding the Vatican and crimes against humanity. Here we'll see come down here we're going to see a post that uh, yeah yeah we see here also that uh, Facebook's blocking um, posts regarding the G new GMO labeling legislation uh, Infowars is uh Claiming that uh, it's being blocked out across the board. That's something else about Facebook. What's going on? Right here, I'm going to share this article with you guys from my good friend Larry Whiting. The Origin of Sun Worship Trinity, Babylon, and Sunday Worship. Now, to all my Catholic friends out there, I want you to understand, I don't hate you for being a Catholic. What I do hate is the kingdom of Antichrist and all of its dirty secrets. I'm going to try to get a little focus in on here. So you can check out a little bit of what I'm reading here. Uh, Satan's church had its beginning at Babylon with the construction of the Tower of Babel on the plain of Shinar by the river Euphrates many generations after the deluge. At that time, the construction of Babylon at the Tower of Babel according to Genesis chapter 11 verses 1 through 4 mankind had multiplied and spoken one language Cush who was the son of Ham grandson of Noah according to Genesis chapter 10 verses 1 and 6 helped to plan with his son Nimrod a blueprint by which to rule the world of humanity through a wicked counterfeit religion. Nimrod was the originator of sun worship and founder of Babylon. Correct. A Bible translation called the Targum says Nimrod became a mighty man of sin, a murderer of innocent men and a rebel before the Lord. The beginning of Nimrod's evil plan had its origin at Babel, which was later known as Babylon. The city of Babylon was with a tower whose top may reach unto heaven was built by Nimrod according to Genesis chapter 10 verses 8 through 10 and chapter 11 verse 4 Tower of Babel they called the tower Babel the gate to heaven but God called it what it was which was Babel meaning confusion for there God confused the language of the people which forced them to scatter now I'm scratching my head here. Now I understand 
the spiritual implications because I know a lot of dirty secrets but to you people out there who are not too familiar with this history you might want to just wonder why would Facebook why would Facebook block this article on the history of paganism well uh, because it's coming quite clear that Facebook protects the Vatican and the history of its horrific crimes against humanity and this historical evidence will show you that these ancient historical facts are what gave birth to the kingdom of Antichrist. Now, a lot of you out there are going to be offended by this information, but pray with an open mind. Study and show yourself approved. Seek God with all your heart and he will confirm this testimony to be trustworthy and true. So continuing. This heaven-defying group of people wanted one government to rule the world and one religion to sway the hearts of mankind. This was Satan's attempt to defy God and his authority. And the ring leader of his scheme was Nimrod. But God came down and stopped this worldwide rebellion at Babel in defiance of his command for mankind to replenish the earth, according to Genesis chapter 9, verse 1. I'll just make a point here that unless God had intervened in the wickedness of mankind, if God hadn't have done this, all the human race would have been given over to satanic religion and the truth would have been lost and as a result no human being could have been redeemed and God would have had to destroy the earth entirely so this is very important to understand by confusing their language into many languages so they could not understand one another's speech. Now, I know there's many people out there that like to poke fun at this. <clears throat> and um, I just have to say, how did the human race... <laughs> How did the human race come up with so many different languages? It, if you really contemplate it, it's a great mystery. <laughs> um, I like to say that the Bible really is the only book in the world that explains this phenomena of so many different written languages and tongues and uh, that's a good point to make right now is historically you might want to research how the Vatican destroyed and annihilated three of the tribes of Rome there were ten there only there's only seven that remain today And uh, I'll just give you an example. The tribe of the Anglo-Saxons became England, modern-day England. The tribe of the Franks became the modern country of France. And there was three tribes that were completely annihilated. Their culture, their language wiped off the face of the earth because they would not submit to the authority of the Vatican. 
and uh, I don't have all the information right now to the whole history and the times and the dates but one of those tribes I believe was the name Vandals which you get the name Vandalism from and um, the other two tribes I'm trying to remember their names I believe one was the Visigoths. And yes, yes, I remember now. The Hurrieli. Hurrieli, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. It's actually a, an article a number of years ago written in Time magazine about how, what a great loss the world suffered by the loss of the Hurrieli people. <laughs> Not attributing the loss, of course, to the Vatican. But the Hurrieli were an amazing, scientific, brilliant people. Very intelligent. It's no wonder why Satan would want to erase them off the face of the earth. So he had great contributions to give to humanity. Well, they're gone. Three distinct languages and cultures are gone off the face of the earth because of the Vatican. Research it. And you want to see the fulfillment of the prophecy, just study the seventh chapter of the book of Daniel because it's prophesied there that this little king would pluck up three of the first kings pluck up symbolizing they would be completely taken away so there would be seven horns left there's a couple of the identifying marks of the kingdom of Antichrist so continuing but God came down and stopped this worldwide rebellion at Babel in defiance of his command for mankind to replenish the earth, according to Genesis chapter 9, verse 1, by confusing their language into many languages so they could not understand one another's speech. <clears throat> mankind discontinued the building of Babel and were scattered to different parts of the world according to Genesis chapter 11, verses 8 and 9. <clears throat> Apparently, uh, the remains, the Tower of Babel, I believe they still exist. Uh, could be wrong, I forget what country is. I believe it might be Iraq. But continuing... Uh, anybody wants to research um, biblical archaeological evidence, visit Anchor Stone, Anchor, as a ship anchor, anchorstone.com, anchorstone.com. And there's the true evidence of Ron Wyatt, a self financed archaeologist who was an archaeologist for God and told the truth to the world. But continuing, Nimrod had a plan to weld together and strengthen this evil religious system. And so he married his own mother, who was Semiramis. She was the first defi deified queen of Babylon, and Nimrod was the first deified king. Semiramis was, a wick, was as wicked as her son Nimrod and as much sold out to Satan and devil worship as did he. Incest was used as a basis to unite this newly false religious system. Nimrod and his mother, wife, would be greatly used by Satan in the following centuries to send countless millions and even billions of souls. To the judgment of hell. <clears throat> Which, by the way, people, the doctrine of eternal torment comes from the comes from Catholic Vatican occult religion. 
the God of the universe tells you specifically in the Bible that the wages of sin is death and the book of Revelation confirms yes the second death yes God will judge the wicked by fire he will destroy the earth with fire and cleanse it but Ezekiel the book of Ezekiel talks about the ashes of the wicked they shall be walked upon eternal torment God sending people away to a hell of torment and fire for not millions of years but for all eternity is a ridiculous blasphemous doctrine from Antichrist and is a total misrepresentation of the holy nature of God and his love for his creatures his children God takes no pleasure in those that perish and he certainly would not take pleasure in tormenting them for all eternity where loved ones who might make it to heaven how would they enjoy heaven knowing that they had loved ones in torment living in torment it's a ridiculous satanic doctrine that's confused a lot of people and sent people away from the truth like many Vatican Catholic doctrines Satan's plan continuing here Satan's plan was to develop a counterfeit opposition system of religion to attract worship away from the true God of heaven this false system had its sacrificial plan just as God had a plan of sacrifice but Satan's pagan worship required the offering up of human beings which was often the sons and daughters of the worshipers a counterfeit holy day was instituted in honor of the Sun God yes Sunday yes the Solos venerable day of the Sun yes this was the ancient occultic day of worship people this was insinuated into Christianity through the Roman Catholic Church I'll give much more evidence later to support that statement a counterfeit holy day was instituted in honor of the Sun God Sunday and this was designed by Satan to rob God of his peculiar authority as the creator of the universe as designated by his holy day the Sabbath <clears throat> fitting I should be giving this message on the Sabbath evening have you noticed how occult symbols are typically reversed example the occult symbol for a cross is an inverted cross most have never noticed that God uses the six to one principle this is that is you have a six of something normal and then on the seventh something special happens example God created the world in six days and and the seventh is a special day of rest and worship crops were grown for six years in the seventh year the land was rested slaves were kept for six years and were to be set free on the seventh year there are six months from Passover to the seventh week being Pentecost there are six months from Passover to the seventh month being the day of atonement Bible chronologists say we are currently approaching the end of 6,000 years since creation and if Christ returns at the end of 6,000 years we will then have the seventh 7,000 year being the thousand year millennial reign which some like to call it the millennial Sabbath those that it will be redeemed will be taken from the earth yes Christ does not come to set up his kingdom on the earth if you read the book of Revelation very clearly it says the rest of the dead 
live not until the thousand years had finished. So that's why it says that when Christ comes, the dead shall rise first and be taken up, and then those that belong to Christ that are still alive to see him come shall be taken. They shall be taken for the thousand years. The wicked shall remain here for one thousand years. Satan bound to this earth in complete darkness for one thousand years. After the thousand years, they will receive the resurrection. <clears throat> in the kingdom of heaven, the great city, and all the redeemed shall come back to earth to judge the wicked after the thousand years. Continue. We will then have the 7,000 year being a 1,000 year millennial reign. See and study Revelation, the book of Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 through 15. So, 6,000 years plus 1,000 years millennium equals 7,000 years. None of this is by chance and is God's plan, such as how we observe the days of the week. Now, looking in the dictionary, you'll see Sunday is the first day of the week, not Monday. Sunday is the first day of the week. Look up Saturday. Saturday was the pagan evil occultic name, worship of Saturn, and the wicked occultic festival of Saturnalia, the perverted festival, that wicked name was given to the seventh day. Saturday is not the sixth day. Look up Saturday in the dictionary. Saturday is the first day of the week. And it always has been. There's much evidence to find that historically to prove all this. <clears throat> the Vatican has tried to change this seven-day cycle and confuse the issue. But God has preserved the seven-day cycle. Sunday is the first day of the week. Continuing. The first six days are normal, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Remember that the occult uses the reverse symbol or is the opposite or in, a, in opposition to God. So if Sunday was Satan's plan for a day of worship, and we have seen historically that it is, then this week would be the reverse of God's week. Instead of being 6 to 1 principle, it would be 1 to 6. <clears throat> Interesting. As seen from the table below, this is the case, and so it is not just two days side by side. It is the occult equivalent, and this is not by chance, but Satan's choice. Sunday, the counterfeit Sabbath of Antichrist. We are fast approaching 6,000 years. The last generation now. Certainly looking that way, folks. And if Jesus comes at the end of 6,000 years, we would then have a 1,000 year Sabbath. A thou thousand years a day, just as God said is as a day, according to Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and as a thousand years as one day. Six days work, and the seventh day rest. The earth's history may end up being a mere image of the creation week, but with a thousand years to to a day. That would be a whole new perspective on the meaning 
of the Sabbath, now that it is for sure 6,000 years of working and a 1,000 years of rest. God does love doing things in numbers. Yes, he uses holy numbers, and seven is the holy number. And the triple seven, 777, seven, seven is the most holy of numbers. <laughs> and also, if you think of the 666 as being the most unholy number, again, you have the six to one reversal. Nimrods and Samaramus followers plunged so deeply into sin and the occult that they even sacrificed babies to Satan in their worship of him. This became a common practice until Shem, who was one of Noah's three sons and the great uncle of Nimrod, in his anger and wrath killed Nimrod and cut him up into small pieces as an example to others not to commit such abominable sins and not to follow such evil religious practices. Shem was a godly man and it was through his seed that Messiah would come. Alexander His Hislop in his book The Two Babylon said the tower of Babel was actually the worship of Satan in the form of fire, the sun and the serpent. Wow. However, Satan worship could not be done openly because of the many who still believed in the true God of Noah. <clears throat> so, a mystery religion began at Babel where Satan could be worshipped in secret. Alexander Hislop, The Two Babylons, Second American Edition, published by Neptune, New Jersey, Luzo Brothers, published in 1959. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Because of Nimrod's death, the followers of Nimrod and Samarimus were stunned and experienced much grief. Their religious hero was dead. They were afraid to continue in their worship of Satan for fear that what happened to Nimrod would also happen to them. So a mystery religion developed at Babel where Satan could be worshipped in secret. Yes. Yes, people. <clears throat> this is the history of the occult religion, the priesthood of Lucifer. This is where it all got started. In secret. Babel was open worship. <clears throat> this is exactly what is happening in these last days. Satan is using mysterious mysteries and deceptions to deceive people into thinking that they are worshiping God when they are actually worshiping Satan. For a short time, the practices of this counterfeit religion ceased, but Semiramis, the wife of Nimrod, <laughs> his incestuous mother and wife, had a brilliant idea of how she could successfully revive her and Nimrod's pagan religion and give it a new form. It was not long after the death of her husband that Semiramis became pregnant. She said that when Nimrod died that he went up to the sun, and the sun then became a symbol of Nimrod. She told the people that a ray of the sun had come to her and impregnated her with a child, and that it was actually Nimrod coming back in reincarnation of the sun god. You see, people? <coughs> There is no limit. There is no oh, limit to where occultism will shovel the shit. The child was called Tammuz, 
and these three were worshipped as the personification of the Sun God. And this is where we find the three in one Trinity doctrine originated and is where the first three came into existence. Now let me make a statement about the Trinity. <clears throat> okay, people. The teaching of the Trinity that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are three separate gods and that w that's the way the Antichrist Church taught it centuries ago that is evil now some people don't even like to use the word Trinity but the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit according to the scripture they are three but they are one Godhead not three separate gods all one Godhead but the Father is supreme and now our great high priest our mighty Savior sits at his right hand continuing So, the child was called Tammuz, and these three were worshipped as the personification of the Sun God. And this is where we find the three in one Trinity doctrine originated, and is where the first three came into existence. This mystery religion was nothing more than Satan worship. Read the pagan origins of the Trinity doctrine for more. The Trinity got its start in ancient Babylon with Nimrod, Tammuz, and Semiramis. Semiramis demanded worship for both her husband and her son as well as herself. She claimed that her son was both the father and the son. Yes, he was God the Father and God the Son. The first divine incomprehensible trinity quoting from the book the two babylons written by alexander hislop page 51 so semiramis proclaimed that her husband nimrod was a god and she as the wife of nimrod was a goddess she then announced herself to be the Queen of Heaven. <laughs> Sound familiar? Sound familiar, people? Queen of Heaven, Virgin Mary, deified, and that she should be worshipped as such. She claimed that her spirit was the moon, and when she died, she would dwell in the moon, even as Nimrod was already in the sun.